All right, welcome all to the Inaugurates Working Group meeting for the first of, no, the 8th of January, 2024. Um, glad everyone is here. Uh, hope everyone had a good break. I know I've had a long stretch where I've not been thinking about things or thinking about other things. Um, so good to get back to this and we definitely have a bunch bunch of work to get done. Um, I want to introduce the topic of the Inaugurates Roadmap. So I'll, that'll be briefly, but that'll be a future discussion. Um, primary topic for this meeting is the ARIES Issue Credential and Present Proof Attachment Formats. See if we can nail that down, um, use the great work that Timo's done um, to try to uh, get that all uh, prepared so we can um, move forward with an implementation. Um, reminder, this is a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, which is on the screen, and the code of conduct is, a, is linked in there. Everyone is welcome at these meetings and everyone is welcome in our discussion. Um, uh welcome and introductions welcome to all joining and welcome to those new to the call if anyone wants to introduce themselves and and uh, mention what your uh, interest is in being on the call um please do so uh the mic is open now for any introductions Yeah, I'm just, uh, hi, my name's Stefan, um, just helping out new to all of this, um, yeah, all of, all of this blockchain uh, sector and yeah, just, just learning and trying to help out where I can. Awesome. Um, yeah, basically that. Good. Where are you based? I, I based in Florida, but I, I go back and forth between Florida and, and Costa Rica. Oh, ah. yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Good to have you here. You. All right. Um, okay. Um, first topic, as I mentioned, is the Anacreds roadmap. So the um uh, for those not familiar with Hyperledger, Hyperledger has a quarterly report from all projects. And at in the TOC last year, uh, 2023, they introduced the concept of an annual review. And so that the <clears throat> first quarter quarterly reports for each year will, will change to being an annual report. Um, and there's uh, a new structure to the document. And the idea here is to get a, um, a sort of look forward of what the project is going to do or, or has the plans for the project over the next year. And um, once we have those to look at, a, a look back on what was accomplished in the year previous. So um, this is a little different from the the quarterly reports, which have become quite routine to, to build out and, and just to talk about the progress being made. So um, I'm working on um, the Anoncred's annual report, but one of the topics we'll have is um, the roadmap and creating that. So um, looking to have a discussion next week at the uh, meeting, the possible list, I'll have a, a, a more uh, complete document to drive it from, but um, the, uh, Topics, the first two are, are obvious ones and on credits W3C VC format, what we're here for, what most of us are here for on this meeting and the finalized V1 spec. Both of those are um, very close in and, um, you know, not just on the roadmap, but but very active. The finalized uh, 1.0 spec is just one pass through probably a few more hours of work and a, and a PR, uh, a few PRs to complete. So that's almost done and our creds v2 is is the area where where we really want to see um work done this year um thoughts i had with it and just 
coming up with this, combining um, the work we're doing in an on creds with other work happening in data integrity proofs and BBS plus signatures. So combining those efforts and it doesn't have to be an on creds format or things like that. It's more about getting ZKP capabilities um, possible and, and easily used in a variety of verifiable credential use cases. It's really about the maximum privacy preserving that we're trying to keep. Um, we want to look at combining um, what we've got for ZKP revocation, which currently is Alisor, which is implemented in, in OnCreds v2, and seeing about whether and how that can, can be combined with Status List 2021. I think it's actually very close and, and uh, potentially quite easy to do. Um, so looking to do that. Uh, obviously, taking an OnCreds v2 and putting it into W3C VC format, the big thing there being how much um, how much further can we go than the flat format of um, an OnCreds uh, 1.0, the, the 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 pure list of attributes. Um, continue to work on the uh, Hyperledger Labs Agora, which is the um, underlying cryptography, uh, evolving the 1.0 spec into a 2.0 spec. And then finally, the big one um, that I wanted to mention would be post-quantum um, signatures in a ZKP. Um, we have support already in an OnCreds 2 for what are called PS signatures. There is a version of PS signatures that are evidently um, pluggable that are post quantum, um, and and so can we combine that with the in on creds work and and experiment with that? So those are the those are the projects the the roadmap we're looking at um, at least, um, and and I'm interested in having a longer discussion about um, the various things in there um, for how we can move those move those forward in 2024. So as I say, that's a topic for next week, um, but I wanted to introduce it here and get people thinking about it and and uh, what else we can possibly do. Okay, um, major topic was ARIES issue credential and present proof attachments. Um, I know, Timo, you've done a lot with these test vectors. Um, maybe you wanna introduce where you're at with it and what you're thinking about. Do you want to take it that in that direction? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's do it. You may have to help me a bit because I've been uh, out of it also since uh, uh, the new year, but I okay. can go over a bit of the um, the test factors that I've set up. Um, no, I'm and sure maybe solve the... the... I'm sorry? Uh, do you want me to stop sharing and you take it? I think that would be okay. useful. Yeah, awesome. All right. Um, so during uh, last week, last meeting, um, we discussed to set up some test factors to discuss like, um, what is it that we tar are we targeting? Um, so I set it up um, uh, before the end of the year. Um, and there are some outstanding questions in here still. Um, so I'll quickly go over what's the list. Um, I try to include a lot in here and basically what it should cover is um, <clears throat> everything that you need to create um, uh, an Anocrats credential, transform it to a W3C credential, issue it using the new um, uh, attachment format, um, and then also create a presentation of it with the presentation um, exchange. Uh, so that's all the messages. I also included the, um, where is it? All the private data needed, like the link secret. So you could like completely run, rerun the flow that uh, I did here and get the same um, results. Um, so I think, um, how I created the test practices, I first created um, like a legacy credential 
um, um, and then I use the code from um, DSR. So the code that's currently in, in, in like the pull request with the, the JavaScript wrapper. And I transformed it to a, um, let me see. Yeah, I transformed it to an Anoquet credential. So this is also actual, the actual output that is the signed credential. Um, um, and I think it still has, no, this is already the updated one where they removed like the, um, yeah. um, like updated to the data integrity. Um, so this is the credential then. And the next thing I did is I used Digital Bazaar's libraries um, um, to take that credential and add an Edwards uh, signature, also using data integrity proof to it. So this is also an actual a valid signature um, on the credential. Um, and then we have like um, a credential with two proofs on it. One is the Anocred one and the other one is the data integrity proof. Um, the code for that is also in this repo. So you have like generate, uh, uh, and Edwards, this is the, uh, the code for it. Um, so you can rerun this again as well. Um, then next is all the ways to issue it. So we have like the, the new attachment format where we can send an offer, um, we send an Anoncred offer data with all the key correctness proof, the credential definition that we need. Um, and also um, uh, the thing to bind it to a credential, like a, a DIT, for example, for the, the non Anoncred credential uh, and the credential that you want to offer. Um, then Good question, you have, Tina. Uh, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that. This one here, so this is the new attachment format that you're proposing. Yeah. Okay. And so it changes. Um, okay. So offer request, get this new format as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I still need to add it that that's what I also sent in the email when I, is yeah. there need to be some options added here, but like yeah. the general, like that will be very similar to the current one, I think. Um, yeah. But like the main thing we add, I think, which is very important is the binding yeah. methods. Um, and that is how do we bind uh, the credential to something? So keys or crypto material is something that the holder can prove when presenting it. Um, that's the, uh, uh, the goal of it, uh, to add this yeah. mainly. And so we have the Anocrats link secret for Anocrats and then the Ditcom signed attachment is the one I propose to do. Like we, we sign an attachment using a specific uh, um, key um, or a specific DIT. Um, and that way we can prove that we own a DIT and then we can use that as the credential subject.id in the issued credential. Okay. Um, then that's the offer. Then um, the uh, the holder, so the, the the one that will receive the credential, will send a request, and it will include binding proofs. So for the link secret, it will be um, the same as you normally would do with an Anocred request, um, but now you include it in here. And for the Ditcom signed attachment, you will reference an attachment ID that will be included in 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 the message. And then um, I also included here a um, um, an attachment, which is signed. So you have the, the data. Um, I think I can um, decode it here quickly. So you see, um, I prove ownership um, of the date, of, of the date, and I do it with um, uh, the nonce that was also included there to, to prevent replay um, attacks. Um, and once that is done, we can go to the issue message, which just includes the credential. And in this case, it will include two proofs, one with uh, the data integrity proof and the, uh, for uh, Edwards and the other for Anacred's VC. Um, yeah, I think one thing that was outstanding here, uh, a question for me is like, 
should the ID also be included in the AMCRED credential? Um, and I think your stance on it was yes, uh, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you need to add it to yeah. the AMCRED schema if you want to have a credential, have an ID in the, um, uh, what is it, in the, in the AdWords credential as well then. Yeah. Okay. That resolves that. Then I think I currently, I, I haven't done it like that, but I'll update it to, uh, um, to then, uh, Include ID field in the credit. Yeah, and then we just need to make sure that yeah, it, there it's, it's like that because it, it it makes it easy to disclose it, and and that's something we should watch out with then. Um, um, yeah, but I think it also like it it also doesn't make a lot of sense to only sign it for the non anocrats credential. Um, so then it's like a field that's in the credential, but it'll be in the credential in all forms. I think so. Um, otherwise, it's another secret value that an onocrats has to know about and ignore. Um, yeah, yeah. So it depends on like if you were to first sign it as an anocrats credential and then add the ID field, then you wouldn't run into the to the problem, but probably afterwards, yeah. If you then parse it, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so, and and we can just error off if you don't have it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's it for issuance, uh, the issuance flow. And then we have uh, the proving flow. Um, so I also picked a, a directory C. Let me see. Um, yeah, so I converted a Anoncrats presentation request. Wait, let me pick that first. An yeah. Anoncrats presentation request um, where we have two groups um, where we ask for the name and the height and we ask for uh, the age, which is greater than 80. And that is, I have transformed that into a diff presentation definition. I hope I converted it correctly. Yeah, so um, I converted it into this structure where we, um, I included this one because like we lose the ability to filter by credential definition ID, for example, which we can do with an Anocrats request. But like, for example, using this, you can already filter it um, quite well. Um, another thing I thought initially we could filter by is the type uh, field as well. So basically if you have the issuer and a credential type that I think that matches quite with a credential definition ID. Um, um, we could now also filter credential definition D maybe using the verification method uh, that's added to the proof, um, uh, mm. which we landed on, I think. Um, and then we request the other fields. We request name and height. I haven't had any like filters for what it should be. And then um, I added a predicate with like, uh, age is over 18 and the predicate is preferred. And in this case, this could be submitted using both um, um, like a zero knowledge uh, proof where I only disclose ages over 18, but set, let's say I don't have the Amocrats credential. This would also be possible because it's preferred. And then I would just um, reveal the age attributes uh, completely. And then it won't be a zero knowledge disclosure. So this making it this way um, allows it to yeah, both submit an Anocrats one, which is more like uh, selectively disclosable or one that reveals the whole value. Um, and then in here I have, uh, this is another outstanding issue is like, how do we specify which formats we support? Because 
um, the current way to do it is using the proof type, but because all the types are now going to be data integrity proof, you're not really saying anything about like which actual crypto suit you support. Um, so this is a new format I added here. Um, and yeah. also one I opened an issue for in the claim format registry to see like, okay, how do we want to add a new one or do we want to extend the current ones with a crypto suit, um, which I want to get some input on. But I think for now we should just probably go with something and wait for this to um, process further in this space. I think because this can probably take a while for this to resolve and I don't think we should wait for it. No. Um, so this is the request then, and then um, you can update that into a submission. Uh, this is just a, it's one credential we're submitting here. So we, we're saying like, okay, this uh, input descriptor satisfied by credential zero. And let me see, I think. Mm. Ah. Yeah, so, and this is then the presentation. So it's a presentation has one verified credential. And um, how I did it like this now is I removed the predicate um, yeah. complex structure, uh, open for discussion, happy to change it back. But this is, um, um, I dug a little deeper into the presentation definition spec. Um, and I found they actually have a native way they describe how you should do it. And that is um, if you include predicate, then the value that you include in the presentation should be a Boolean. A Boolean. Yeah. Um, and so I was thinking like we could come up with our own way, um, but if the presentation, the exchange specification mentions how you should do it, I think we should follow that. Um, and the only thing we lose with that is that we can do multiple predicates on the same attribute. But yeah. I think that's a fair. We've um, lost. Oh, there you go. I thought we lost your video or your audio. Good. Uh, what do you mean, Golda? With where where would we put age over eighteen? I mean, <clears throat> didn't you type something where it says age true? Like I don't like the idea of age true, right? It should be is adult true or age over eighteen true? Because you could also be saying like uh you know age over thirty or age uh, under ten or you know there's a lot of things you could say about age. I just like things to be one hundred percent semantically meaningful and self contained. So if possible, can we make the predicate be, you know, age over 18? So you're saying that the item, the JSON item would be age over 18. Yeah, because I think that's, that's a very common thing. It's a really common thing. It's like, are they an adult? But maybe in Europe, maybe it's over 14 or maybe it's over 21. And so, you know, just having age true isn't a thing, right? Yeah, so I think how, because... Um, the reason I went with true is because they define it like this in the presentation exchange specification. Oh, 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 um, I'm, I'm, good with, that, I'm good with true, Timo. I'm just saying that the, the thing shouldn't be age. It should be age over 18. Yeah, I think, but I, I'm not sure because then it would be a bit weird because um, if we go back to the example uh, presentation request, um, oh, the Presentive presentation um, is that I'm requesting property age, and then suddenly the presentation includes age greater than eighteen. So then there would there won't be a mapping between like I want this property to be over eighteen. You're asking I want age to be over eighteen, and then it's put in another um, property, which we could do, but then we deviate from yeah. what the presentation exchange specification describes because they say you request path uh, or you request h and then the value of that property should be the output of the predicate so h over 18 um 
And I mean, technically, so, they should be requesting age over 18. But yeah, I guess if they're already requesting age a lot in a lot of actual implementations, we have to live with it. But if they're not already doing that, we could actually make the example be like request age over 18. I mean, they should actually be requesting what they want, which is, is the guy an adult? That's what they're requesting. Yeah, I, I mean, there's so many ways to do that. And this would vary on every use case. I think this is yeah. the to do it is is just to say we've got a predicate on we, we've requested a predicate on a on a particular item oh, okay okay so so we're saying the predicate is true we're not saying that the value is exactly. true we're saying the predicate is true the predicate is true got it and, okay. then, and trying to merge the name plus the predicate into into a single string is is difficult i think it's i think that's a stretch no, no, I see what you're saying, Ben. It's because you're, you're, it's this field. Is this predicate on this field true? And then you're returning yeah. the value true on the field, which is weird, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but I, I thought be, like, uh, because it's described in the specification that we're using, uh, I feel like if we don't have a very good way to do it, I think we could best follow what somebody else already wrote up. Yeah, got it. Okay, if I think of anything good, I'll I'll do it. But yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. So sorry, that was a very long um walkthrough, but that's um that's all the different uh test factors that I have set up, and so there's a few to do's, and 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 um I think we now covered most of them, and then I can update them to to make them actual verifiable, um, and then you could write your implementation against it. Um, I think, yeah, and so the only thing is the, the RFC that needs to be finalized. Um, but if we have consensus on them all, I can work on that uh, tomorrow morning directly and um, have a version like that's ready for implementation and feedback by tomorrow. Okay. Um, one of the things I'm really nervous about is is the amount the amount of work it, it's it's feeling too large for this code with us, and I'm very nervous about that, and I don't want to have that happen. I think one of the things we have to do is, um, Timo, you've done the perf I think the, the correct amount of work here as far as figuring this out, but what, one of the things I don't want implementers hung up on on this first pass is um, too much of combining the two signatures at once. So we need the focus to be on just getting in a non-creds in W3C format across. Um, does that make sense? Um, we've got a path to how we would do it, but the focus needs to be just on, on just getting the non-creds through in W3C format um, to try to keep the scope down in this first Thing. Does that make sense, Timo and, and others? Okay. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm I'm just a bit not sure what the, the good cutoff point would be then to like what is included and what not. Um, well, certainly, I, I don't want I don't think we should spend time um, doing coding examples that that, that handle the I've got an anon creds already, and then I attach a, a non anon creds, uh, another data integrity proof to it. Let's just go through with I uh, all I the only path we want working at the end of the code with us is I've got an anon creds um, schema. I create a credential, and it goes through end to end as a W three C format. Um, okay. The trickiest part of that, from what I see, is the is the definition, the PE. So, if you could think about that, Timo, as to you know how far you want to go with that, and and where that cutoff should be. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, don't what yeah. we don't want to do is is have the. Um, We want to know what the path is, <laughs> but we don't necessarily have to have the code written. So it's this balance of 
let's not do anything that screws up the path, um, but let's not do any extra beyond exchanging it on credits credentials. Yeah, I think like if I would focus on, like if we are not doing the uh, multiple proofs on a credential, um, I think my focus would be uh, mostly on, I think, the proving part, because I think that is where you can gain, like, the flexibility. Um, um, I think if you also look at, like, MDocs, for example, they are very specific in how do you do interoperable proving, but the issuance part is very, like, because there's, like, there's a tighter integration uh, usually between these two. Yeah. Um, so I think like even issuing it in an Anocrats format, but then proving it as a W3C credential and VP using presentation exchange, I think would be what I think is then most beneficial. Um, um, but yeah, uh, otherwise I think doing the new attachment format and presentation exchange proving uh, also uh, fine. Um, and then we could add like, not proof in the future or something. Okay. But it's up to you also, I think, to decide like what is most important for you to get out of this. Yeah, I mean, the, the most important for me would be an end-to-end -end test that shows an on, you know, Akapai issuing, um, receiving a, a, a presentation, uh, you know, obviously where we use it, BC Gov uses it um, is, so uh, my other hat's on, <laughs> um, is issuing from Akapai, holding by AFJ and, and uh, proving um, to an Akapai verifier. Um, so that's the, that's the flow that's most important. So I think the attachment format is the biggest thing right now is to get that going and finalized. And then we can for, complete the phase one. Here's what we're trying to do and, and try to get very clear on exactly what is going to get implemented. That's what we want to get down to right now. And, and we're, we're getting tight on that. So I, I really want to see that. So we've got a combination of things of if you could push on the, uh, the attachment looks like it's pretty much complete. Um, looks like we do have our, our set of test vectors look pretty close. Um, <clears throat> what I'm thinking is we highlight which of those test vectors, you know, the form of them that need to be worked on and then <clears throat> what specifically will happen in the code. Ken? I can't, uh, I'm not hearing you if you're speaking, you got your hand up? Maybe a... Yeah, Yeah, we can hear you now. Thank Speak you. up a little. Yeah, so I said, um, I ran some, some tests. Oh, yeah. Uh, test suit on the test vectors and um, some of them passed and some don't. Well, um, I don't know if that's normal, but I think it's normal. Um, and I don't know if there's um, if there's other samples I can compare to it. I get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So for the V two, yeah. for testing against the V two test suite, I think there would be two changes needed. Can you go to the credential? Timo, display the W3C credential. Yeah, so we'd have to change the um, context at the top and the issuance yeah. date. Yeah. I don't know what the year would be. 2023, is it? What year is the credential V2? 
it's it's optional now, I think. Oh. And then you I lost. I think this should be it. And issuance date you took out, it needs to be valid from. But I think the, the property is optional now. So, and we oh, just really? added it to be spec compliant. So, uh, oh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. I didn't know it was optional. So everything's now optional. Uh, issuer is not, I think. Uh, type, okay. context. <laughs> um. Okay, and the the W three dot org twenty eighteen credentials V two the twenty eighteen there that can't. Oh yeah, that's probably not right. I just changed it to V two. I don't know what the yeah. V two uh, context URL is. Yeah, start sticking in years one after another. Twenty twenty two. Let's go twenty twenty three. I bet it is. <laughs> See what resolves. Ah, 22. Oh, okay. In space. Get the year, rid of the year entirely. Okay, so this should, let me see if I can save it as a new, can I add file? Oh, yeah. I'll edit here. Um, As B2. Okay. So could you uh, run it again uh, against the new file I added? I'll uh, verify it also with uh, because I think um, um, DSR has also added support for V2 already um, via like a version switch. So I, I should also be able to get it out in V2 format from their library. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing. Okay. So I'll be working, um, let's keep in touch on, on making the progress. I think the thing to do, I'm gonna look at is a hack MD to try to figure out, okay, here's exactly what we wanna get implemented and, and what needs to get implemented in, in Akapai. And I'll try to pull um, the, uh, some of our developers in on that. Um, I, I've also asked Andrew who's been on vacation, Andrew Whitehead, but I've asked him to um, focus on the and on creds um, pull requests and get those finalized so we can get stability in the main path. As you mentioned, uh, Timo, in your note that that we need to get the main um, stabilized, the main branch stabilized. Um, so get Andrew focused on that um and then nail down exactly what we're going to have implemented um in the two in the two frameworks as part of this code with us um feel free to get together if there's anything in between but otherwise we'll meet back next week to discuss further that works good all right, any other topics for today's meeting? Um, I had one thing I tagged you in today that we could maybe uh, oh, right. discuss. Uh, just be, just to, to clear up some confusion on my side um, yeah. and know like if this has any implications. Um, wait, I'll 
please share my screen again. Yeah. What was that topic? Um, shoot, I, I saw you post it and. Oh, yeah. 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 This one. So we were in the progress of uh, removing in the SDK uh, yeah. support and moving in everything to Anocrats RS. And in that, yeah. we kept some tests that were using in the SDK, but yeah. now created the proofs using Anocrats RS. And it turned out that the tests were now failing because the proof that was created is different. Um, and um, it seems that um, with in the SDK, if you reveal an attribute and a predicate um, from the same credential, it will create one proof. So you have the, the a combined proof of the attribute and the predicate, but with Anacred's Rest, it creates two proofs, um, um, one for the predicate, one for the attribute. It, it still creates one proof if you combine all attributes, but like there's no link anymore, it seems, between the attribute and the predicates. Um, I don't know if there's like an overarching proof that that does uh, this, but um, um, I'm curious, like okay. whether this That's... has any security implications. Sorry, that's not what I was expecting this to be about. And it, I had a real hard time figuring out what the differences between those are. So I probably should have done more to sort of combine them and understand what the difference is. So I'll I'll talk to Andrew more about this one. My understanding is yeah. this was was the same between the two. Um, I thought there there might be something different between them, but I would not have expected different proofs. Um, see, yeah, so the equality uh, proof, yeah, as you can see be, here, like the, there should be ahead. one equality proof per source credential and one GE proof per predicate. And that should yeah. not have changed between in the SDK and as far as I know, that should not have changed. So I will, if you're saying that, so what are you, yeah, go over again what you're saying is the difference between them. So if, if, if you look, this is Anokrat's arrest um, and you have two proofs in this uh, uh, two proofs that are created in the Anocrats proof. And the first one is an equality proof for the name attribute. And the second one doesn't have any attributes revealed, but this closes the H is over 50, 50 predicate. Okay. Um, then if we look at the proof for um, in the SDK, let me scroll. I, I can understand you. You couldn't make sense of it with this. Uh, <laughs> um, if you look here, um, there's only a single proof entry, and on that is the revealed name and uh, um, the predicate proof. But the proof request is the same. Um, and I've been confused about this before already because it seems in the proof request structure, there's no way to indicate that if I, for example, want the name um, uh, attribute to be exposed and H over 50, that I can say, I want these to be from the same credential. Well, if you ask for multiple attributes, you can say, I want the name and the H to be from the same credential, but there's no, in the proof request, there's no link between it. And it seems that it now also sees them as separate proofs or in the, under the hood created one proof of them. Okay. Um, yeah, I got to think about that. As far as I know, that should not have changed, but obviously I'll talk to Andrew about what could have changed in there. Because yeah. it should be, as I say, I mean, it's all, it all comes back to what are the source credentials you're using? And the grouping, as far as I knew, always was, you know, there's an equality proof 
for a source credential and then however many GE proofs for the source credential, regardless of what was in the presentation. And then that was mapped to, to the presentations um, elements. So that this change is a surprise to me, unfortunately. Um, so um, I'll have to talk to Andrew about it. I understand this better now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, we'll wait uh, Andrew's response. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. Any other topics for today? All right. Thanks all. Have a great rest of your day, however much is left. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.